Hello and welcome back to the show. So we shall shortly be into cash. So I think generally speaking, the desk is expecting a 2-0 for G2 now. I have hope. I have hope. I have, I'm not going to say that uh, I'm expecting RK to take it because it would be an upset. We know how comfortable G2 are. They've demonstrated it various times versus Virtus Pro, for example. Uh, what, what, is, what, do you, what do we think the ways are that uh, RK can try and do some damage versus G2? Uh, for, me, for me personally, uh, G2, of course, have such individual skill that you feel like over enough instances of you know these rounds and different decisions and situations you feel like they should get an edge at a winning edge but i feel like strategically we should probably see some cool stuff from from the russian side and that's definitely going to be required they definitely need to be on point when it comes to the strategy and the coordination of attacks because you can't you, you, one way you can deal with the edges that the other team has with their, their superior individual skill is by being able to split them split them up, put them into unfavorable positions where like their percentages on their plays are much lower. So for me, that's going to be a must. And th and in you know in insofar as uh, this argument, I would say they need to have a strong T side. They need to have eight eight to nine rounds at least on their T side. Yeah, Kurt. I'm gonna say they need uh, two rounds more than their opponents if they want to win. And, Good uh, point. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yes. And besides that, I think that when you are an underdog playing a, f a favorite, especially a team like G2 with so many strong individual players, more than anything else, you have to be on point with your aim. You have to be able to, to compete with them. So that's going to be the, the story for Arcade if they want to make an upset. But I agree that it's going to be a 2-0. Well, let's see if they can make an upset. The bomb is moving towards the connector area. Again, you have G2 playing the retake. And I think we might finally see something I keep harping on about in the fact that if you play the car position on A, you can't hit a squeaky door being opened. So uh, Arcade can opt to just creep through the door undetected. Although, since G2 are playing a retake, I'm not sure what difference it would make. No one down for either side yet. However, Fox has taken significant damage. Arcade just waiting, waiting, as are G2. Bunched around mid and the B bomb site for the time being. Hut G standing next to the door. Again, Makalele just holding the angle. I'm kind of curious, seeing how spread out Arcade are. Right now, okay, they're just going to go for a fake. I want to see if it pays off for them. Yeah, the fake is really, really risky. Uh, we got four players alive for both sides at this point in time. So it's, I, I think maybe they did enough in one kill and delaying, but we'll have to see because, as you mentioned, James, this retake is kind of the plan anyway with the setup from G2. So after a bit of confusion, G2 will arrive to the retake as they intended to do at the start of the round. And they're looking to hit the shots because Shadow already taking a nasty bit of shrapnel to the face there. But still, what is this? Four kills out of nowhere straight away. Arcade hit every single shot they need to hit and they're going to win the T pistol round. Surprising stuff. It was uh, unexpected. It was actually looking really well for your, for G2 because even though they did somewhat get faked, they already set up from the get-go to do a retake on A. So they're not really worried about losing that bomb site if they can get a favorable trade uh, over towards that B bomb site when Arcade are faking. Uh, Coldy just doing a great job to get up two frags and then after plant. Well, again, Arcade need a good start. They need to get a lot of rounds on the T side if they want to do this. So. I'm hoping to see a good anti-eco strategy from them here, just so they make sure they don't make any of the uh, cardinal sins of you know, spreading out. And you know, Yanko was really having a hard time with, <laughs> with explaining, yep. well, hard time with teams, and was explaining that uh, last night. We need to take a moment to just to look at the setup of G2 over towards the B bomb site. I think Jake's playing behind the box. We've seen him get, I think, four kills from that position before. It might have been Cluj where we saw that. Yeah, he's lethal with it, and especially because he's got Fox as just a dedicated baiter for him at this point. So Fox is just going to take as lot of attention as possible and then hope that Jacob can replicate what he did at Clues. Yeah, so we'll see if uh, Arcade walk into that. Again, they're just waiting around Arcade. They haven't really got any significant map control or any kills. And heading towards the B-bomb site with about 40 seconds left on the clock. Two kills coming in for G2 so far. So uh, Arcade might be in a lot of trouble here as the G2 side is streaming down to the B-bomb site. Yeah, perhaps a little bit too spread out initially. and. This push is quite slow. We can see all the frags going the way of G2, and it will be closed down, and it will pick up all the guns as well, which is a huge, huge pain in the backside here for arcades. One kill there. Yeah, that's that's all he needed, though. I mean, uh, it's just thinking about Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wonder if they, you know, didn't make that. If, I, I feel like they maybe made that a little bit more complicated than it had to be as well. But uh, I think if you're if you're on 40 seconds and you don't have any kills, you better have a solid strat and a lot of monotons. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna die. <laughs> they had a Molotov too on JR. Didn't Just really the one. Yeah. So didn't get to use it. See you there. 
Some Ooh. sniping going on from Fox for the UMP. Maybe a sign of things to come for G2. Got Rain playing close to mid as well, just leaving Makalele spotting over towards A. Gonna have the boost in for the flexibility. But we'll see Arcade. Uh, do they have a plan for this round? Well, Makalele has been opened up. They can open up. Fox is gonna have some aggression over towards B. You see a lurker. Well, meanwhile, Rain has taken control of the A bomb site for now with that MAC-10. Making some cash as well. It's another $600 for him. JR has the bomb. He's on his own and he's only got 20 HP. So I would suggest hiding. He's going to get executed. Cody left. Well, not for long. It does surprise me a little bit that we ended up with these two maps actually as well because uh, I do feel like these are two of V2's best maps uh, hit from tournament, with all the tournament history that we've seen. Uh, cash and, uh, and Inferno. But also one thing to note is Arcade are one of the teams that made it through the open qualifiers. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the reasons why we might have ended up on these maps is that obviously G2 do have the option of banning out a couple of maps. And uh, I, I would I think it's fair to say that G2 should have a wider map pool than, than Arcade does at the moment. Yeah. So that might, might be why we're seeing two pretty favorable G2 maps coming through. And it's not like Arcade gave up on Inferno by any means. We probably should have had that map. Well, you see Makalele taking a bit of damage through the door there. Chandra is going to close the door as Squeaky is no longer open for business, quite literally. We'll see. Oh, having some shit. He's <laughs> running around. He's running past the door and opening it and closing it. So just trying to make a nuisance of himself. But Arcade has taken significant damage across three players. And this is actually one thing, just to get a bit, get a bit nerdy about the uh, revolver. The only... One of the only places I think it might be useful is just to spam through the wall in catch. I haven't tested it yet, but I do wonder if it is, uh, if it will do significant damage, especially in the nerf state. Well, Arcade are really taking this uh, way too slowly after losing the initial player as well. And uh, considering how much utility they've used, they've not gotten anything from it yet. And that that's, uh, shocks me. Ooh, that works off. Chandra's only got, he's lost 3 HP from the fire, but there's a push coming in towards B bomb site, and G2 are holding steadfast, the P90 spray down will be glorious. Jacob taking down two, McAlele losing his life elsewhere, and again Kachandra, he's only got 4 HP, ooh, he could have been taken down there, but Rain just looked the wrong way at the wrong time, there's 10 seconds though, so Jacob has pretty much won the round here. Well, ooh, just about, maybe. If he can survive, they have to go hunt him. Now he's stuck behind the box. He's going to be have to force us an engagement. And no! there it is. Amazing with the wall bang as well from Kishanda. Oh, brilliant stuff. Kishanda, um, 4 HP, Jesus. And they steal it away. That Jake, is a robbery. Funnily enough, Jacob went behind the only box that you can actually spam through on that bomb site. <laughs> wow. The irony. That is robbery right there. Yeah. That is daylight robbery. It's not going to deter G2 from buying up, though, in the upcoming rounds. Make a little down to a CZ, but still should be able to get into a good position where he can do some damage with that weapon or that pistol. We might see some aggression from G2 here because they're lacking the nades, and indeed Fox is going for the creep, but Coldy's waiting for him, and he's going to take off his scalp. Meanwhile, there is a kill for the CTs, but uh, they are not in a good position here. Jacob's common position has been naded and Molotov, and he's been shot in the face. That's not a nice way to go out. Yeah, Rain is in a good position though uh, by the vent room and he can maybe get distraction, but beautiful awareness from Arcade, looking in the right place at the right time. What a shutout round. I mean, G2 had some early aggression and Arcade seemed to just anticipate it and they just smacked it down with no, no hesitation. Yeah, that's the third round out of the five we've played in total now where Fox has gone aggressive to do that peak. Two of the times he's actually gotten something for it, but this time Arcade were ready for it. And it shows that they were adapting. You could also t see that they were pre-nading Jacob's usual spot, also multiving it out, just being as safe as possible, not wanting to run into a bit of a trap or just losing out rounds too easy. One of the problems with range position and events in that situation, I'll just walk over this eco as long as it goes well, well, it's almost done, is that um, if you're a T facing the entrance to B and you stay on the left, as, as you saw Arcade doing. Mm. You can see, if, if somebody extends to peak from the vent, you can see the CT's legs, but they can't see you, which is yeah. what happened to Rainer. So it's a bit of a handicap when all your teammates have gone down on the site. Ooh. Arcade looking good for now. Four rounds, we had a good start for G2, but now Arcade have got four rounds on the T side so far. So obviously we do expect them to need quite a few more, but they have momentum on their side now. And again, G2 are gonna have a strained by Fox with no armor. Indeed. 
Yeah, I would assume if he, since he doesn't have armor, I'm not expecting him to play as aggressively. He's just going to hold the angle and wait for someone from Arcade to run into him instead of actually looking for the pick. So I think this is as aggressive as we're going to see Fox really from playing from checkers. Well, here we go. He's looking for the angle towards the toxic area and no tease to be found just yet and he gets caught by JR just at the right timing for JR at the very least Fox not quite so happy with the timing of his repositioning there and JR is going to be finding himself still on the angle and JK might go for the challenge here he's, he's fancying his chances against JR and that's going to be a mistake JR is going to have it every day it would seem hey, where's the TLC down ain't that just the way that life goes down 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 well they're down two players, James, so G2 are pretty screwed in this position. And I like how Arcade are going to play this out. They're just going to try to go for the uh, for a bit of a set play towards A, it would seem, or are they just going to go for a contact play? They've moved out of the positions to Nade. I think Mer might be going for the Vent uh, Molotov, indeed. That's going to strength. That's going to bolster the G2 hold of two people towards B, although Will they read it could be a fake? Will they have time? Will they even bother it? Indeed, there is one man rotating now. AZ spotting, and he is dead. So, does it turn into a two-man save here? It's a five versus two. We've got considerable uh, heavily taxed players for RK, but really, Rain, what can he look to achieve in this situation? He's got $50 in the bank. We're talking about individual skill, by the way, and that being an issue potentially in this on this map. This round is, was won because of JR being able to match match the skill there in that occasion. But this is, is this too much to lose? It, it also, well, I think this is a tiny bit expensive for Arcade, especially since they're repeaking constantly, but they know that G2 are in a worse spot and they're going to be able to buy just perfectly fine afterwards. But over the long course of, or for the long run really of the game, then it might not be worth it, especially if they can't actually find anything. Oh, oh my back. God, <laughs> I'm afraid. Well, Arcade will carelessly, ca sorry, carefree, ca carefree, delete. Just, just <laughs> let's delete that entire <laughs> sentence. Forget it. They will ruthlessly continue their aggression over towards G2. We have picked up two orbs now. Yeah, they've actually opted to force fully. So this is a big round for Arcade. They can really put some distance on G2 right here. Well, Arcade looks to be... Uh, having an execute towards the A site. Although this is this is uh, something we always see some interesting reactions to on the CT side, where Arcade have no one in T main when they throw all these grenades. Sometimes you see a push from the CTs, but they weren't in position to do it. So they've uh, smoked off the quad area. How are they going to get through it onto the site? And will we see some flashes come in, or will they just jump over the top and wreck everyone? Apart from Makalele, he's going to get a bit of a tag, and he's going to go down as well. It's a clean round so far for Arcade. Only Jacob remains. Wow, how did they get so much damage done? Nobody dying in the site take. Crazy stuff. I actually thought that they would be in a lot of trouble there because three they're going into three players of G2. I was thinking, oh, maybe they're just going to fake this, this, uh, this set play. But they just went for it. And, I mean, we didn't get G2's perspective, so we didn't see where the first couple kills really, like how they, the, the infight was. But what a crazy result. Yeah, and it seemed like Arcade were... We're so quick to actually push out onto the site once the smokes went down. So you saw the guy who was wrapping around that Michael like eventually leg shot it. He was able to be. Some, uh, I'm not even sure if he was the one who actually picked up a couple of the kills on the players. But while he's doing that, wrapping around the site, you also have players from uh, Arcade jumping on top of the uh, red container. So that was like a riot. From, yeah, they're just getting attacked from every angle. They were turning over the police cars, smashing the windows, and saying rude words on the radio. Arcade looking to push quickly towards the A site now. Rain takes down the boosted JR. So it's going to be four AKs versus uh, the increasing number of CTs heading towards the A site. I think we've got a full rotation coming in now. Chan trying to get a straight towards the forklift, but they're on the side and stuff. Playing those close corners. Lots of damage done to Arcade. Hutchie's got one HP here. Looking good for the CT so far. But here it is, JKM still alive with that deal. He's being such a pain in the backside, but he's getting tagged lower and lower. They can't, they can't quite finish him off though, just coldly left. JKM on 4 HP. He's got the bomb at the very least. Looks like he's going to just hightail it out of there. And uh, will JKM actually go in to pick up a weapon? Looks like he is. He's got himself an AK now, and Michael is spotting the legs of Coldy, almost finishing him off because of that. JKM and Coldy in a bit of an interesting one on on one here, and it's quite a hard call to make as a CT in this position. Ooh, if Coldy ends up going on onto the Z bomb site, which it looks, 
he kind of has to with the time remaining. I, I don't see any way of Jacob actually losing this round. I want to see the brazen short plant. He's creeping like Cadian in the club. And he's going to get the frag onto Jacob as well. <laughs> so Arcade could extend their lead. G2 still with just two rounds on the board. He really took his time there because he had, what, seven seconds left yep. the, when he kills Jacob. And if he doesn't see Jacob there, that still means that Jacob could be posted up behind the quad box. And if he wants to check that corner as well, then he's not going to have enough time to plant. So big risk taken from, from Coley there, but works out. Pretty crazy how well they're doing, actually. Seven twos. Did not expect this. This dominance. Let's uh, see if Mike Lilly can keep himself alive. He's already down to 22 HP here. So it's going to be Fox. He's going to take down Coldy, though, to give the edge to the team. And Kishanda getting a bit bold in a squeaky area, trying to get a pick, actually. And there's been some damage done, of course. Mike Lilly's over there, but he's really playing with fire and explosions. Yeah, he's trying to keep people busy over towards the A site as we have three people lurking towards or around mid at present for RK, although we've got one boosted now, which is JR, I believe, in the mid area, looking towards Makalele, and they've got a Hachi in A main now, but Fox is in a very unlikely position. Talk about an off angle. Makalele coming in for a frag as well. Fox has left the build, but it's building, but it's a 4 versus 2 for the CTs. AZ and Fox soon disappear. Bonds collected by Arcade, but they are heavily outnumbered, and Jacob's coming in for a big flank, which is going to be loads of information here for G2. But if Rain doesn't get the, f the uh, kill quickly here, if he just goes down for free, then Arcade have a really good chance in it because Michael is very low on health. It was quite am amazing to see how, uh, how long Kashanak actually stayed alive, pressuring him from Squeaky, but this should really be the end if... The oh, well, they got the smoke here. There what is the frag on to Rain. And it's Jacob coming in from the flank that should really just tie this up for uh, G2 quite nicely as they should back away and not expect this. There's the headshot, but Hachi makes the frag onto Michael Lele, but there's no HP left. Great nade from Jacob to finish off the remainder of Arcade. And he's going to go and find the AWP before defusing. But I mean, cra some crazy stuff in that round again. I mean, it really seems like in various instances, Arcade are matching up individually. Yeah, no, they're definitely hitting their shots right now, and I'm quite surprised as well. <laughs> yeah, I would have expected Mir to, in that situation, to actually use the malt that he had to clear out the corner where I think it was Rain who was left. Anyway, they, the NBK corner used the, his malt up to actually clear that area out, but instead they just kind of jump out on him and win the duels, which they've been doing quite, quite nicely so far. But then again, it has come down to some pretty fortunate timings on their end. You could say uh, how Fox got picked off. Early on in the Byron, but look Ooh. at Rain. In the face, baby. Yeah, talking about timings. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice range to get a kill on the on the Max 7 as well. They can be coming in for support, but Fox and they can go down. Rain is just everywhere with that Max 7. He's got a good chance of getting a frag onto JR. He's only got 24 HP, but there's support from a teammate as well. Coldy holding the angle. Down goes Rain to the flame. Makalele is the only man standing, so G2 looking to get reset here. And uh, that would be disastrous for them. We've only three rounds on the CT side so far. Yeah, what are we witnessing at the moment here? Arcade. This could be quite a result. Now, there are some teams that are starting to pick the T side of this map. Uh, Glelly going in. Looks like he's going to pick up a quick kill here, but can he really get this done? He's going to fluff the, the Molotov there. Unfortunate stuff from Michael Elliott that'll make his life a little bit more difficult, and he's going to be finished off there. He died. But yeah, I mean, uh, Fnatic are one of the teams that have started to pick this, the T uh, side, when they get the choice on this map, as you know, a few others have started to do. Um, it does feel like Arcade seem quite comfortable on the, the offensive. Yeah, they're really getting a lot done right now, and I don't know, it doesn't feel like the aggressive peaks or duels that teacher trying to take her working out for them on the b-bomb side so i would look for them to actually start playing more passively on that side if they want to try for some aggression maybe see if they could find openings towards a main or pushing aggressively through doors basically do something else because what you're doing right now is not really working out uh working out as your city setup so g2 have bought the 5 and p250s good start by az Often you can find the CTs holding the, the default plant spot with the 5-7 here. It can be very powerful from that, from that position, but G2 have nobody on the site. Rain coming in with a 1D. 3 versus 3 at the moment, but I'm not sure if G2 will be able to get any of these rifles that they've dropped. Uh, Rain, uh, basically basically like artillery there with that Deagle long range. Uh, we've got uh, more shelling continuing, but Rain will f uh, finally actually start going for the push. Going close, and that will be the end of him. And it's uh, just Jacob left. He's... 
handily dealt with. So 9-3 now, and the buy could potentially come in from G2, but it would be absolutely appalling. But they kind of have to do it. Arke could realistically get up to 12 rounds. Yeah, so he said they needed a lot of rounds on the T side. They're doing rounds. well so far. I don't, I, isn't, is, would, be a, would a 9-6 be enough? No. They, they need to get into double figures at least, I think. Alright, so we're going to have a fast play through this moment. Makalele has made a very good read, looking away in case of any flashbangs. He'll throw a flash himself. The bomb is down. He could really shut things up. He can find the other players here. Round two, there's one more player behind the smoke, but he's going to get sprayed down, so the bomb will be in control of Arcade. We find ourselves in a two versus two. We've got an, uh, an exit from the B bomb site by the final two CTs, and they've been spotted by Arcade, which means that bomb should be rotating towards main now. That's so sick in this position as well, to spot both of those players by CT, and uh, for Coldy to have such good presence on the A bomb site, so that Joe just knows where to go. This is so, so alleviating for the T side, but they're just going to go for the open faces here, and Coldy takes them both down. Left on 12 HP, but he'll get the remaining kills, and RK get the 10th round. This is madness. I think it was uh, in the first 20 seconds, I think six players died. Yeah. in that round. It was insane. It's almost a pandemic. Very fav favorable for the T's. Well, G2 in the second last round, we're going to have Rain on the Nova. I do like a good Nova. I own one myself. But will he be effective with it? It is, has longer range than the other shotguns because of the longer barrel. Oh, Makaleli's down to 9 HP, but will that be enough for him? Jumping onto the boxes now, as you commonly see, and he will be left there to rot in a cold, lonely existence. Mm. Really optimistic position to take with the ZZ as well. Well, it's starting to make things happen, slowly but surely. Although, down to three, both sides, as the bomb is going to start to make its way to a bomb site. Got a rain providing a bit of presence in the B area. And I think this is felt by Arcade, and they do also realize that they do have 50 seconds, so there's no incredibly huge rush for them at the moment. As we'll see, JR being uh, faced by a couple of players, a bit of harassment, but that's good information. They know now where two of the three players are. Very good information, and this, of course, is going to start allowing them to figure out, okay, we're going to push towards the A-bomb site. There can be maximum one player in this area. We like those odds, as JR sticks around towards B. Yeah, but how long will JR stick around for? Because that gives, puts his men at a disadvantage towards the A site, although Coldy will certainly help things up. Down to 17 HP, though, so he's going to have to be careful. AZ versus three with uh, full life and a helmet as well. And we know how clutch he can be. Looking for the first one, but he will be the recipient of the bullets as opposed to the one dispatching them. So, the 11 to three. The timing are just, are just working out perfectly for Arcade at any stages of this game. You know, all stages of this game so far. Uh, right there, we had AZ posted up in vents to really control middle, but because Jair is able to put so much pressure on the two players on B, AZ drops down the second Coldy actually runs out into mid and basically opens up and creates pressure for, uh, or an opening for RK towards that A bomb site. Well, we got Samir making quick work of AZ there as uh, RK will be up against a, an appalling buy in this last round of G2. And this is going to start applying the pressure. Here we've got a lot of focus towards this this uh, B area at the moment, and it's going to be easily taken over by Arcade. Well, I should say easily, but it's a two on two. And uh, however, Rain and Muckler are on Deagles, so it might be a bit difficult. Got Mayor maybe thinking of uh, going for the smoke push, and indeed with the flash, it's perfect, but he's not looking behind him, and that's a free kill for Rain. Could have been such a good idea, but it was, in the end, uh, an oversight that cost him his life, leaving Coldy to try to clutch. He's been really good for the team so far in this first half, but he won't get it done this time around. And uh, yeah. Me went full pantomime mode. Do you get the reference there? He's behind you. I didn't get a reference, no. Never mind. 4 to 11, G2 with a uh, disastrous CT side. 11 rounds on the board. Things looking good for Arcade. Yeah. Might just be, be too much of a, of a deficit actually to come back from, even if you're G2 on cash. So this is very. Just very surprising from uh, from Arcade. Very impressive as well. Coldy leading the charge there with 17 frags. Everyone else about the same average 11. We've seen some players though making really high impact frags and 
there's been everybody has been turning up in the right ways for for arcade to make of course put these rounds together like Mir has had a lot of crazy impact frags that if nothing else as well you know they've been keeping the uh the fragging height to damage keep the economy always under pressure so quite impressed from each and every player so far from arcade although jr not quite as good without an orb it seems no so g2 with it all to do if they lose this pistol round will they lose the will to live that is the question. JR will have the superior range with that uh, P2000, but no headshots for him just yet. Coldy has a crossfire with him, but there's still no kills here for the CT side. JR in the corner now, and there he will be left by Makalele. Man advantage for G2 at present. And they are on the bomb site. Bomb should go down shortly. Only two arcade players left versus the three of G2. Trying to stop the plant from going down is going to fail, leaving Mir in a one versus three. We've got a, at least a double peak coming in, and the third player is around the checkers area, so uh, Mir's going to have to go nuclear to win this one for his team. Yeah, it looks like G2 have done enough. However, Mir, going to get a sneaky frag there. Will scare G2 just ever so slightly as he goes for the push. That's the end of that. And G2 get their good start, but again, they've got to apply a good anti-eco because Arcade are li likely going to throw some pistols in here, some investment as we can see. A couple of pistols being purchased. Smoke as well on Cassander. Not really sure what he wants to do with that. Might just be for a smoke off an A main. Maybe they'll try to do a similar jump as the, to what Michael did with the round he had to see he, He's headed towards mid, so I think he smokes off mid and then just pushed straight through it immediately. Or he's in yeah. the smoke, perhaps. So we've got four over towards the uh, A site here for G2. And Fox will be lurking with that big nasty P90. So. Down go the initial players starting to push one by one. Dying in isolation are these CTs. Saw two players try to work together on A, but uh, there will be no frags whatsoever here for RK. Um, Fox even spots the, the boost up into vent there. So Arcade's big plan of a I guess surprise attack towards middle falls flat. Not much you can do then. Now they're going to have to do a clean eco, so this should be a seventh round for G2 and a, a good chance to bolster, bolster their economy. I'm going to be interested to see how many of their players, that, or I guess it's Fox and Jacob in this instance, if they're actually going to stay on the P90s going into the buy rounds. Yeah, I mean, the P90s are pretty darn effective, to be honest. It, I guess, depending on how you want to use them, you can get, uh, get some really fast plays going with them, play it. Play them as expendable. Well, I think the main thing is that considering Arcade went for the fourth buy, it's likely that they're going to be lacking helmets in the next round to so they, in order to get a better buy with grenades and so on. So that's where the P90s might come into play. You can see JR and Coldy will be lacking the helmets. We'll have to see what the rest of the players will do. The problem is G2 may feel risk averse because they have a four round deficit. But indeed, so th I think they've made the, uh, a good read there. You can see four of the CT players are not going to have helmets, which means those P90s are going to be glorious. No. Yeah, JR's got to deliver here. Look at the pace from G2. They are not messing around. And indeed, as you mentioned, the P90s being very key, probably way better than, than the AKs in the choice of strategy that they wanted to apply. Well, the bomb hasn't gone down just yet, but you can see that it's basically abandoned ship. We've got two arcade players deep into the A sites. And uh, Mir is just holding around mid. We'll see if he moves over towards A as well, or if he'll be like an early warning system for the save. Nope, they're all going to head towards Squeaky. We commonly see players boosting in the box on Squeaky as well, and I think... We're going to see that as well. they're going to do that. Yeah, they're going to just get a player up there for that sneaky angle. Yeah, the added benefit that G2 gets from actually holding on to these P90s and whatnot is the fact that they can chase now. Even if it's still early on in the first half, they... Okay, now they've picked up AKs, but they can still chase because they've saved up so much money. At least Fox and uh, and Jacob. Maybe you don't want to chase with the the op on a Fox, but it's definitely something they can't allow themselves to do. But again, like on Inferno, they just seem to seem to decide on the fact that they value their own economy more than they do arcades. Absolutely, and arcades will be in that position to. Are they actually gonna? Yeah, I was going to say. I would have dropped a couple of Famasas. Yeah, there we go. Coldy gets one Famas. I'm not really sure why JR is not receiving anything at all. I guess he wants to hold on for, uh, for a potential off by. Well, G2 have four plays headed towards A. So it seems a fast anti eco or anti force buy coming out from them, and it's working well so far, although 
Mez even things up very quickly. He spotted a player over towards the forklift area. And that's a man advantage for Arcade. G2 have the bomb left in a really bad position, actually. So they might have to just go for the kills here in the near future. Yeah, this fast play has been all but dismantled now as G2 try to salvage the situation and get the bomb towards the bomb site. Bit of an oversight, perhaps. Having it so far back. It's giving key moments for RK to re-engage and reposition. And that time could be very critical in the outcome of the round. So we can see Murr finding an engagement from Rain, but operating from behind the smoke, he's going to miss his chance. And now he's all that's left and his position is known. So you can't expect too much from Mir here, but he will pick up the kill against Rain. Still two more players, and they are quite tagged actually. So, oh my goodness, Mir just somehow knows and he gets all players that were left. What the hell are we seeing from this guy? It's not just happened once, this guy has been going ham the entire series. These peaks are absolutely bananas, Dan. I don't even know what I'm witnessing right now. That was nuts. Amazing, yeah. Macadamia nuts. Oh my god, that is so crazy to win that round as well. And he picks up the orb and everything. What a change, a game changer that, that is. And it's got to be frustrating, <laughs> frustrating for D2. Uh, a, a bit of a broken play gets salvaged by the fact that Rain is able to, to come from behind and basically clear out three Archeo players and, and buy space for G2. Obviously, G2 wasting so much time by having the bomb dropped in no man's land messes them up a bit, but still, in that 2v1 situation, they should definitely be able to win. But look at Kashanda right now, picking up two frags early on and G2 already in trouble. Well, there's one frag onto a uh, player in the vent. And with only two players remaining, well, that's a nice teamwork actually for the, from the remaining players, but they're not going to get the frag there. McAlady will have to trade, but now he's alone versus three. Makes it two. Where are the final players, though? That is the question. Which play does he make? Not the right one, Mir, to take him down. Arcade move closer so to taking this to three maps. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't G2 just rush B and then A and then mid? Yeah. As a opening strategy for those last three rounds. <laughs> Interesting. Seems like they just want to push up the tempo as much as possible because they feel like that's the way to go about it. Trying to overwhelm the uh, opposition, perhaps? Yeah, don't, don't allow them to set up for good crossfires, get good rotations, all of that. The last map should it be required will be a Mirage. And I think if it does make it there, we'll have to go in with no assumptions. So both teams back on the buy now. G2 with a five round deficit, Arcade three away. Can they hold their... Ooh. Could you see the gun tip there? I was wondering, actually. Seems possibly he could. I think so he did, otherwise he probably wouldn't have gone for that pre-fire. So a bit of a warning, and Arcade will know that there are or were at least two players in a main. You can see there are basically three players on the A side with one rotating towards mid, but he's just moving backwards and forwards, so he can get to A very quickly should he be required. You can see G2 just holding formation, waiting for a pick, as they were on Inferno. Cash is perhaps an easier map for him to do it on, but so far, no picks for either side. And it the engagement happens. Murphy can engage the flashbang, but it's not going to happen. But his teammates are there to spray them down. They're lining up now. But G's making it happen. And it's just one player there, Fox, again alone. And somehow Arcade has defended this marvelously. G2. What was the problem there? Well, they kind of forgot to check the most used spot on the entire A bomb site, which is interesting. Well, 20 seconds left. Fox doesn't really have much of a choice then to just go for it at this point. It's not going to work out. So G2 have been struggling to figure out what the hell to do, it would seem. Evident by let's rush A, let's rush B, let's rush mid. And uh, then this is a bit of a slower, more kind of contact play. They're trying to pick into the bomb site. And just got dismantled by RK. They seem very disciplined. They do, and I think that's why G2 wants to up the tempo because th there's a bigger chance of them messing things up. Speaking of tempo, they're moving very quickly towards the B site, trying to get past the uh, smoke, trying to free fire up, up, but JR is too fast. They're on the site, but they haven't got any kills yet. The flashes are coming in and they're blind. They're going down, Cody with a two man. Shanda coming in with another two man as well. Completely shut down. Only two frags there for G2 despite the speed over towards the B bomb site. Oh, they're just getting dismantled right now. I don't... It's like they're lacking inspiration as well as to how to develop the rounds. It feels very lackluster. Yeah. It's, they've just... They have a one-track mind thinking that it's going to be speed that kills Arcade. But it's not working out because Arcade are able to adapt. Hey, Mr. Kadia. Please press the button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of...
of nades on D2's side, so they could potentially do a, a I guess, a standard execute, and it seems like they want to split A here. It would be nice to, I mean, because there's not, there's not many rounds left for them potentially, but to take map control and then develop that somehow, middle or so on. So on. But Kashanda's been pretty good and he'll be good again. Looking for the frags there. Long range spray down towards AZ. It's not going to happen. And we have a 4 versus 4, but G2 are on Lank. They're very, they're very wanting for weapons. And May will take down Jacob. It only gets worse here for G2 on Cash. Man advantage for Arcade, who are on game point. Rain, let's see if he has an opportunity to pick up a weapon. Or will he just rock the Deagle? Ooh, Fox coming in with a good angle onto Mir, so not over yet here for G2. JR though, ooh, missing the shot, and now he's shown himself, which is going to be a severe disadvantage. He sees the player jump onto the site. No wallbang attempt from him. Bomb goes down close, and he's just going to get the no-scope into the trade though by Rain. G2 survive for now. I love how he just ran in there. <laughs> just, <laughs> just ran straight in there. There's no fear. Yeah. Throwing care to the wind. Ooh. So Arcade are going to be on the eco, which gives G2 an opportunity to catch up and build some money. Both teams are lacking the money, although it's G2 who have the buy that AWP picked up from the end of the last round as well. Nice little bonus. Missing the shot onto the player in the checkers, but his time is surely not long here with us. So a man down for either side, but you've got to favour G2 in this situation. Quite spread out across the map. They've got people in A at the moment. That's JKM leading the charge around towards the quad area. But of course, Hachi's going to get in with the 5-7 up close. Three versus three. And now where does the bomb go? Look at the rotation as well from the CTs. Coming up short. Hachi playing around the smoke. Going to move towards the forklift area. Yeah, he's looking to go big here, but he's going to get uh, taken down pretty easily. However, he's got teammates in place, and there's a lot of confusion at the moment as to where people are coming from, but it is just Coley left. He's been the main man here for Arcade on this map so far. Fitting it would be for him to be able to pull this one off, and he's going to get the first kill. Michael Lele whiffing a very important shot, but AZ just dragging the mouse across Coley's face is going to get it done. 15, 10, 5 map points here to take us to the Decider Mirage for Arcade. It would be heartbreaking for Arcade if they actually drop this and go into overtime. Feels yeah. like they, they deserve. Well, they could have very easily won Inferno, and the way they've been playing so far, it, it feels like well, they have been playing better than G2, hence why they're up 15 to 10. Well, we've got two man push here, two squeaky door, and JKM will trade. So you could say that would be advantage for the T's. It's down to four versus four now. And there's lots of time here for G2 to take decisions. People huddled around the boost for the T side. Bit of aggression from Arcade looking into team main, which may give, give them the information to position accordingly. Yeah, Kishanda is in for a surprise, but the Shadow actually gave him a little bit of warning. However, Rain still faster to the trigger, as we will have now G2 with a pretty nice advantage. But what is this? The bomb is down in the smoke now. Mir is going to be able to hold on to a key position, so G2's advantages are now going to be a little bit less advantageous as Michael Lair looks at to get himself a good position with the orb. Covering fire from multiple angles, but where are these CTs going to come from? Very stressful times here for G2. Yeah, uh, spots Fox through the smoke. JR goes down elsewhere, down to the two versus two now. The CTs have a crossfire, but who's going to see the tight angle first? It's going to be Rain to take down Mir unawares. And there it is, shut down, do Arcade get. And G2 close the gap once more. Arcade back onto the eco. How many buy rounds do Arcade have now left? Well, now they're going to have to eco. They, it depends on whether or not they want to get a double eco so they can get an op on uh, <laughs> two and a half. You can't really get a half a buy round, though. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> but it depends on whether or not they, they go for a double eco to get an op up. Okay, so the flash is going to come in and Coldy's going to take one. Dale's going to take one. But G2 will take three. Things evened up. I didn't even know how to commentate this. This is crazy. Everyone's dying all the time. Mir's the last one standing. He's got no armor and a deagle. And he's going to get finished off. An expensive round for G2, but they continue to close the gap. Arcade are going to be back on the buy now. Carnage. Absolutely. Carnage all over the place. But Arcade, they need to close this. It's getting a little bit too risky again. G2 already won map one. So it almost feels at this point, G2 be in with within you know the luckiest save to just steal this one away right now. Arcade need to win this and punish G2 for their transgressions and for their misplays. 
and G2 looking to play a bit of a slower opener. Bit of a default here, just spreading their players out. They've got a guy uh, or guys on all the positions of the map at the moment. And Michael Ellie looking for the pick over the top in middle. And looks like Arcade are fairly tentative here. They don't want to have any forward engagements. They want to force G2 to make a mistake and to overextend. We're seeing G2 slow down quite heavily, actually. Ooh, Fox is going to go for that repeat versus the AWP. This is dangerous. And That's, that G2. seems like a big misplay right there. Yeah, no. If you can get away with it two times, then you should just count yourself lucky enough that you're not dead, even if you don't have a kill at that point. And that's obviously going to prompt the rotation away from the B-bomb set as well. G2 pushing the A site now. AZ has gone down. Big advantages here for the CT side. Not much health onto Jacob. Makaleli is now all that remains between G2 and Map 3, which is going to be Mirage, should Arcade finish off the job. We've got flashes coming in. Down goes Mir, but it's Makaleli versus 3. And Arcade just holding angles, just waiting. This should be impossible for McLeary. The gun barrel will give him away. How does he get that frag? Not going to be enough regardless. Hutz G to finish things off there. 12 to 16 in favor of Arcade Esports. So, what a strong performance from them. A surprising one. I had faith. None of you guys did. I had faith? No. You Come said, on. You, you, were, you I was, had faith I was, in cute tactics. Hey, I was, I was you just think everything's I was cute, mate. Russia, you know, you never know what's coming out of Russia. Met against strategy. What's Come that on. supposed to mean? Yeah, then that's... It you means, you means don't count them out. It means, it means that G2, you never know what's going to hit them. You're, <laughs> you're a fraud. Yeah. Yes, yes, running yes. In there, yeah. What can you tell us about this map? I was really impressed with Arcade's performance. They uh, won a lot of the crucial rounds in the first half, especially the round where Jaken was hiding behind the box, the time was running down. It was a really important round for, uh, for Arcade to win the first gun round. And uh, besides that, they had a lot of different tactics or ideas, you know, they would switch things around. They would go for a fast A take, for an A execute, for a fake, for mid control, you know, they did all these different things, which was uh, really impressive for me. I did not expect them to do all of that, to have such a uh, detailed and such a well thought of game plan. And then uh, switching to the, to the second half, to me, it looked like, I don't know if you guys agree that maybe the G2 players started, you know, they became a bit, uh, they got a bit frustrated by, by the whole situation. You know, you can see that they were, as you have already pointed out, they would rush B, then rush A, then rush mid. Because besides all of the things that uh, RK did tactically, they were 100% on point with their aim. Everyone stepped up. In the first game, we saw mostly Mir and, and JR. But now it was all. It was Keshander, it was Koldi as well. So I'm worried about G2 coming into the third map. Now it's 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 possible for, for Arcade to make an upset here. I, th I think the frustration and uh, that you're talking about there, for me, when we called out that, that repeat from Fox, that kind of says to me that Fox is, is probably, one, a little bit frustrated, and two, maybe not confident that his team has a plan beyond just, I just need to make something happen right now, even if it doesn't make sense. Kind of felt like one of those situations to me, which is uh, quite worrying for G2 indeed. Yeah, given what we saw on G2's T side, it didn't really feel like they had too much of a plan. And you'd imagine if Robin is sitting there in, in spectator slot, actually being a coach, then he would have had something to say about it because it seemed very lackluster from G2 the entire T side. Um, I think their CT side got unraveled by the fact that RK got off to such a hot start with every margin possible going their way. You could tell, you know, it goes back to the round where you had Jacob and Fox on the B-bomb side wanting to boost up into vent. The Fox have been holding that angle that's open to him for so long and the second he goes up to boost, when he comes back, Jair's in position. Everything just kind of snowballed out of control from there on and out. You can see so many situations and so many rounds. Yeah, even the 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 force by round where uh, G2 had AZ in the vents and two people on the B bomb side, uh, kind of dueling it out with JR. Coldy being able to sneak behind mid as AZ drops down from the vent instead of getting spotted, instead of having G2 pick up needs to kill there. All of those things add up into a, a really strong T side from from uh, Arcade, and that's obviously going to be extremely frustrating to play against when you feel like everything you're doing is is maybe the right move or the right idea, but you get punished because you're one millisecond too late. So, uh, but I, I think you're going to be fine going into Mirage. I think they're still going to close it out two to one. Mirage is going to be our third map. We will get the analyst view of what might happen after the break. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. <laughs> 